Hello and welcome to episode 209 of the ZA Tech Show for Monday the 14th of May 2012. Slight technical difficulties, but you knew that already because uh, I've been hosting the podcast or <laughs> I am hosting the podcast tonight, so there are always a couple of technical glitches when that happens. Uh, I'm Brett Haggard, thanks for joining us and tonight in the studio we have Mr. Benedict Kelly, Chief Whip at Ungeeked and uh, he does a little bit of writing for Mail and Guardian too. Good evening, Brett. Oh, let me g- give you some mic. Oh. Let me give you some mic. Hold on there. Try again. Try Let's again. Take two. Ah, there we go. Good evening, Brett. How are you doing, Ben? Yeah, not too bad. Good, good. Good to hear. And Mr. Dave Greenway. Greetings. Uh, what do we plug for you? I mean... Everyone's always confused. I just like to plug my Twitter because if I write anything, it's probably going to land up there anyway. So, at Dave Greenway. At Dave Greenway. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but but you do some stuff. You've got a blog and... Uh, I, I blog. It's uh, the tech duel, .co.za, duel, like fighting because there's lightsabers and stuff on the front because I'm a geek we and I like love it. like a little bit of lightsabers. Everyone loves lightsabers. So hopefully you are listening to us live. Uh, we stream live every single Monday night uh, at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, African time, <laughs> Central African time, I think it is, CAT. Yeah. And... Um, kind of interesting that uh, you could even be listening to us theoretically at 35,000 feet right now and I'll tell you why because uh, I was at a little launch last week uh, well not such a little launch uh, Mango launched their in-flight Wi-Fi in conjunction with uh, wireless G's G Connect and Vodacom and uh, we got to theoretically test what uh, um, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi in the sky looks like um, it didn't work unbelievably well, but I've had a couple of people fly since then, and um, they reckon it works absolutely fantastically. So uh, theoretically right now, you could be catching the not-so-red eye <laughs> back from Cape Town to Lanceria on Mango and be listening to the ZA Tech Show. If you are, we'd love to hear from you. I mean, that would be pretty impressive. Um, neither of you were at the launch. What did it seem like outside of... Uh, the launch event itself. I mean, you know, did you guys get a chance to take a look at what was going on on Twitter and stuff like that? Yeah, I was following it on Twitter. I think that any launch which involves an airplane with more than one engine is con- does it constitutes as large as opposed to a little launch. Yeah, for sure. It must have cost them a bomb. I mean, it's a, it was a pretty big. It was one of their normal standard planes yeah. that they that they they yeah. went on. Apparently, it's something like twelve million rand to retrofit the plane to actually have Wi-Fi on it. So. Whatever they did, they probably spent at least 12 bar getting that plane ready for you guys to go and sit on it. Indeed. And then we broke it. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> so what happened was after, after much fanfare and, um, and uh, um, uh, like uh, huge expectations, we finally got to, uh, to test the service. And uh, so what happens is, and you know, one of the nice things I quite liked was the fact that there's um, – um, there's, uh, you know, a major change to the announcement, all right? So whereas they say that, please put, uh, you know, all your devices off, they now say, please put it in flight mode. I'm like, I'm a fan of flight mode, okay? <laughs> because mobile devices have a flight mode. And For a reason. It's called flight mode because you're on a flight. So you should be entitled to use flight mode. So you put your devices into flight mode, right? Then, um, then seatbelt lights go off once you've reached, like, um, a safe altitude or whatever the case is and uh, you then get to surf there's um, there's a little bit of uh, uh, um, bump in the seat back that you kind of pick up like kind of step by steppy stuff but essentially it's the same as signing on to Wi-Fi in a coffee shop you uh, sign on to the uh, hotspot hopefully the only hotspot <laughs> in the plane although I did see a couple of other hotspots people were convinced that LTE could work at 35,000 feet or whatever the case is but theoretically you sign on to the hotspot you uh, log into the portal you either use a pre-redeemed vo- you know, a, 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 a prepaid voucher for 50 bucks that you bought on the ground or a 90 buck round trip voucher which is valid for a day and you um, log into the portal and ta-da you have the interwebs did anyone manage to catch a speed test while they were up there so I did and the first the fastest I got um, it must have been just before they rebooted the gateway for the second time. I got about 3.2 megabits. That's not bad. Which is not bad. Um, I must admit, speed test had a hell of a time trying to figure out <laughs> where I was. It was like, you know how it normally geolocates you based on your IP or whatever the case is. And yeah. it was 
absolutely that little mental. line to the server just keeps getting further away and it's <laughs> it struggled man it's so struggled to figure out but then it finally figured out where i was i managed to get some ping packets out pings were were high i'll be honest but i think it was largely as a result of the fact that there were about 100 people on this plane all hammering this wi-fi in a really really big way yeah there were at least 40 people out of my twitter feed on yes. that plane yeah. mm-hmm. and just watching that like watching the amount of tweets that were coming through just from that hashtag alone yes. I, I, I could see that the wi-fi was going down the um the interesting one was i wasn't able to browse at all but but you know besides the the one little moment where i got speed test to run um, i wasn't able to browse to google or anything else facebook whatever the case is i was able to get about three tweets out so so i managed to rock some tweets out i managed to also hold an im conversation with somebody over skype which worked fairly well. No, uh, no voice though. I mean, it would just like absolutely not do the voice thing. The um, the other thing I managed to do is get some pings out. And you're talking kind of high thousands, anywhere between 1,200 to most of the time it was hovering around 1,800 in a milliseconds to uh, Google.co.za, which is shockingly slow. That's terrible. Mm. Um, but I think once again, as a result, of the fact that there were a lot of people hammering the hell out of this line. Yeah. The theory is that it is satellite backhaul, um, eight megabits per second, um, out of the back of the plane. They've got a, it's got a special little like dome, almost like they've like retrofitted a little yummy to the top of the plane, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's rocking this little like hood, all right? This hood of awesomeness with that cool tech inside it. But um, that's where all the magic takes place. They were using uh, Microtech routers. That's the one thing I did manage to to see that it was using a Microtech router, and um, and yeah, apparently eight megabits per second quite comfortably, um, and your latency should be comparable to a sluggish ADSL line, but you should get fairly decent throughput. Well, it's satellite, isn't it? Yes. So yeah. well, as soon as you bounce anything off a satellite, you, your your latency is going to go to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So I mean, that's that's obviously be to be expected. But once the packets start flowing, you you won't notice the difference really. Yeah, Indeed. so like a second and a half before your website's actually found, and then mm. once it you know so, gets So I mean, there, you know, that's the thing. It's you know, latency in terms of like everyday usage is actually a fairly overrated measure of doing stuff. So the thing is, uh, it takes 1.8 seconds if 1800 milliseconds is your is your ping time for something to start happening. But once something happens, it Yes, it's 1.8 seconds later, but the data is streaming in. So you look at a like an audio stream should work quite nicely, even in a high latency environment. Mm-hmm. A YouTube video should play quite nicely in a high latency environment, although you'll wait a while for it to begin caching the info, right? Yeah. So I mean, it's not it's not quite that bad. Um, web browsing again, it'll take 1.8 seconds before a page starts rendering, as you were saying. Yeah. But once it's rendering, it's rendering really, really quickly, right? Exactly. So then you're getting the full bandwidth. The problem is going through something like you know any news site where there's a lot of links and you're going backwards and forwards and trying to page through something like that you know if you're sitting mm. on your if you're sitting on a phone and you've got a couple of tabs open i mean you can only do so much with 1.8 second la- latency if you're going to be going to news 24 and clicking on a few links and opening them up and going backwards mm. and forwards every single time you open and go back there's going to be that little 2 second delay and it it could get irritating sure but that's also an 1800 millisecond delay when you've got 110 of the like top geeks in joburg hammering the hell out of it so sure. you'll probably see something closer to like 900 well yeah you know like what uh, a couple of people are saying to me six seven hundred milliseconds to google.co today um is what they got um and it was interesting there were a couple of people that got on way before others um somebody like Stephen ambrose for example who frequents our podcast quite often Stephen. um Stephen had existing um, wireless G credentials. Okay. All right. So that's the other thing. If you're a wireless G G Connect customer, you can use your credit on on the, the flight, already. which is kind of cool. The other thing that I found really really cool from a Vodacom perspective, and I mean seriously, hats off to them. I, you know, it'll be interesting to see whether MTN can even do this. Vodacom being being a major partner of yeah. the you know of the gig, but. Um, if you're a Vodacom customer, you have the ability to, instead of having to buy a voucher, you can use your cell phone account to buy the 50 buck voucher and it gets tacked on to your phone bill at the end of the month. Mm, that's cool. Which I was like, yeah. wow, that's really, really useful. Um, 
I'm assuming that's a Vodacom yeah. service provider customer as opposed yes, to a yes. generic Vodacom customer. Which yeah. I'm pretty sure. You know, I'm pretty sure it has to do with you being a, a Vodacom service provider customer. But it's it's. I think it's seriously cool. I mean, I became quite used to it traveling around the U.S. It's pretty commonplace in the states, um, and. It's scary if you're traveling to Cape Town and back quite often, how dependent you would be on the service. A lot of people went, oh, but you know what? It's not that big a deal. I get through some email or whatever. You know what? It's not the mail you get through on the plane that's that important. It's the 100 to 150 mails that have managed to accumulate over the flight time that you've now got to deal with when you get to your destination. That's either going to mean you're going to be perpetually behind on mail throughout the day, or it's going to mean that that evening you're going to have to put like an extra hour's worth of work in, which is also not ideal if you're traveling, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so I think that's you know that's kind of cool. Plus, you know, instead of taking a newspaper on the plane, hell, take uh, take like read the web, yo. Yeah. You know, I the mean, big you know, benefit really cool. of 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 high latency. Is that hopefully it will discourage people from making voice calls on the, on the plane? So less Skype. Well, um, so I can assess you managed to rock some Skype. Yeah. Um, for a while, so like our operative use of the word "some" because when he did his his live crossing to seven hundred two from the plane, I mean he was you know truth be told he was the only guy on the Wi-Fi at that stage. All right. Um, so they managed to set him on a separate, a separate AP, um, you know, access point or you know, separate SSID. So he signed in, very, very clean. But Skype has got fantastic call quality in very low bandwidth environments yeah. anyway at the moment. And I think Skype is something you'd need a very low latency connection for. So I mean, that's also a testament yeah. to the fact that it works quite nicely. Um, but his phone call was cut off about two minutes in. So well, then know. again, I'm just trying to think of some of my friends' mothers and what it would sound like to have them on an aeroplane yammering away on a <laughs> Skype call for hello? two hours on the way down Can to Cape Town. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Exactly. Hello. You know, it's it's one thing Remember to get all to of this take stuff. The, uh, the kit goes out of the oven. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, it's 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 great. Look, we've got in-flight Wi-Fi, and you can answer your email, and you can keep up. And you know, for business professionals who you know can't have that extra two hours of the day taken away from their um, you know busy schedule where you have to be answering email and everything you do is you know make or break for your business cool get in flight wi-fi and sure. rock it and do whatever you have to but uh, my mom having skype on a plane um, yeah. i'd rather Bad have idea. the two hours of peace and quiet knowing she's flying than having her being able to contact me yeah, for sure yeah. um okay so two things i want to touch on quickly but you know before we move on from the topic the one is uh price 50 bucks for a flight from Joburg to Cape Town, all right, or ninety bucks round trip. Thoughts? See, I don't. When I was talking to some of the guys in my office, they were going, "What a ripoff," you know. And I'm thinking, you know, this is a premium service. Okay, it's 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 a monopoly. Mm -hmm. It's the, there's only one service provider. It's in an area where we've never had coverage before. Uh, or have had, and I'm personally fifty bucks is not a lot of money. Even a hundred bucks for for the day, like ninety yeah, bucks for the sure. day, or is is not a lot of money. Like it's a, a one gig top up on like an ADSL lines anywhere between you know like thirty and fifty rand anyway, depending on where you are. So sure, the fact that you can browse on an airplane should generally probably be worth about the same amount. I mean, it's not like you have to have it. You know, sure. if you're if you're that price sensitive, you're probably not someone who's flying in the first place. You see, and this is the thing as well. I kept on saying to a bunch of people that were bitching about the price. I said to them, look, so how often do you fly? Right? Like not all that often. Okay, cool. So I fly a lot. I fly to Cape Town and back to Joburg a fair amount. Okay. And what I can tell you is when you're flying those early morning flights, you're spending 100 bucks on the airport for like um, a decent cup of coffee, a sandwich, and like a chocolate. Because guess what? That's your breakfast. Right now, on a budget airline, you've got to buy your food on the plane as well, unless you plan to like not eat for three hours, because realistically, that's what it's going to take, right? And um, soon you've blown like 150, 200 bucks. So I mean, yeah. plan a little better and spend some uh, spend some cash on the Wi-Fi. I think it's I think it's not bad. Look, it's it's really there as an extra service. You're not gonna they're not forcing you to pay the 50 bucks. No, sure. So mm -hmm. if you want the internet, pay the 50 bucks. And, and I just don't. I mean. I think if you flew every up and down to, to Cape Town every single day, it would get quite expensive. Sure, well, but, you, uh, but probably frankly, there's going to be a frequent flyer. If you're in the kind of that, job yeah. where you are flying to Cape Town every single day, three thousand rand a month is going to be pocket change to you. Also, bearing in mind, 
the fact that you're probably paying about 40% less to fly Mango than SAA. Yeah. yeah. So the second thought, and this is the, 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 the second thing I wanted you guys to chime in on, would this make you fly Mango over any other airline? Yes. I would I would pick Mango if I were... I mean, especially if I was going on a business trip or something like that, and I had the option of flying Mango and flying, let's say, let's say Kalula versus Mango. So the price or even one time for or, that matter. Yeah. Or one time. Any one of those three budget airlines, uh, not Velvet Sky. Uh, <laughs> we said fly. That's, that's the operative word. Yeah. Uh, if I had the option of uh, of all three, similar price range, mm. uh, similar uh, departure and arrival times. Uh, I would take Mango. Okay. You, Dave? Uh, you know, I'm pretty much my flight routine is take out my iPad, play games. So internet, not really that big a thing for me. You know, if, okay. it, if it came down to it where I was desperate for internet, then sure, you know, I'd have to plan in advance for that kind of thing. But a two-hour flight for me, I'd rather spend, you know, email for me not happening for two hours isn't the biggest thing. I mean, I get sub-100 emails a day from work. Sure. So the rest of it's personal email. And if it's personal email, it can wait. I'd be cut off from Twitter. See, this is well, the thing. Like a whole two hours. How would I breathe? It would feel like the cabin was no, please, unpressurized. I six times more than either of you, and I can take the cut off. <laughs> yes, with your blog the, tweets for you. That's it's cheating. Not the, Shut it's, up. Not the, it's not the tweeting, it's the reading. Ah, yes. Cool. Alrighty, so uh, that's in flight Wi Fi. 50 bucks or 90 bucks. And uh, I think it's kind of cool. Like, uh, you sign on in a coffee shop. You can either, like, Buy buy some credit using a credit card. You can use some existing like credit you've got there for uh, you know NG Connect or buy a voucher. Uh, you know apparently they're going to be selling vouchers on the plane as well, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So if you change how your long mind, until uh, FNB puts it into their little app where you're exactly. just sitting there and like on the tarmac and you're like, oh well, I want some internet. Pop it open. Look, buy prepaid, buy internet voucher. Done. It's actually a fantastic segue. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Because the next I've been thing, planning that one. I actually enough, held it back. <laughs> Strangely enough, the second thing I wanted to chat about was uh, geo payments coming into the FNB app. And, so much uh, of awesome. I just want to say that I was the first journo to get paid some money by Michael Yodan. <laughs> All right, and I have well, the a bank, screenshot. A bank gave you money. Right. How much did he give you? 50 ronters. What are you going to use it for? Well, this is the thing. Buying it's like, internet on an airplane. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah. It's like, but I feel really bad now because I have 50 <laughs> rand of Michael Yodan's money. And I was like tweeting about it afterwards. I was like... Okay, so I'm really, it's kind of cool that I managed to take a screenshot of the app while Michael Yodan was paying me 50 bucks. But now I feel like I've been bought, dude. Seriously, <laughs> it's like, this is really like in some dangerous, uh, you know, moral yeah. territory here. I think I'm probably going to give it off to charity or something like that because I feel. So what, really what you're saying is that you're cheap. No, it's like it's not. It's not the. Bucks, Brett, really. It's about quality, not quantity. Okay, <laughs> that's why you're giving the money away. You're maintaining totally. it, maintaining journalistic integrity there. Absolutely. No, well, I actually tweeted him and he said you could always give it back. And I'm like, well, then you're gonna have to let me know where you are so I could geo pay it back to you. And then he was like, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> I think he doesn't like me secretly, yeah. but uh, okay, that's fine. Stalker much? So I have a question. Yes. The the geo pay allows. Customers, F and B customers, to send pay money to each other. Yes, okay. not, not only F and B customers. Well, I'm getting, not F and B customers. Getting, too. But also, if you're a non F and B customer, but you have the app, then it creates a little e wallet for you on your app, which lo keeps money there for 30 days. That's correct. Yes. Okay, at which between which time you can then send the money to other F and B customers. No. F and B app users. No. What does it do? If you're a non F and B customer, you can only receive. You can receive money, and, mm -hmm. then withdraw and you cash it, it in ATM, yeah. at an ATM. Oh, okay. In increments yeah. of, I think it's up to 5K a day or something like yeah. that. 3,000 mm -hmm. 3, or 5,000 rand a day. Mm -hmm. The maximum transaction volume is 35 grand mm -hmm. Okay, that you can even take into an e-wallet, which is Massive. really, that's huge. Yeah. I, I don't know too many people that are paying 35k off of a cell phone to each other and like yeah, hi a, how are you doing oh pretty, i owe you 35 it's a grand. pretty big lunch there's a couple yeah. of bottles of uh dom perignon and <laughs> like some uh, some, some serious cognac in that process but yeah um i think it's unbelievably cool just from the perspective that it fits right into my life and okay total disclaimer i I am an FNB customer, Me but too. there's a reason I'm an FNB customer. It's because of innovations like this. And yep. I mean, really, it's super useful. The number of times I feel really, really bad because I left my wallet back at the office or whatever the case is. I'm meeting somebody for lunch. I feel really bad when they're paying for lunch, uh, unless 
it's a vendor that's treating me to lunch or they've got a piece of news to announce or whatever the case is, in which case it's, it's, it's accepted, right? But the thing is, it's like if you and me meet for sushi, right, and I haven't got my wallet with me, I really would want the ability to, to pay you 50% of the bill or whatever, like right there. Okay, and then it's like, it's off my shoulders. It's done. It's sorted. I don't have to worry about this anymore. And it's very secure. It's unbelievably simple. It's it's great. It's, it solves a, a real problem. Yeah. It's very, look, it's very cool also because it's device agnostic. So, I, you know, I've got a BlackBerry. You've got an iPhone. We both have the app on it. Yeah. We can just pay each other. It's not like we have to have, you know, things like Bump, which did similar sort of, you know, mm. location sensitive. So you, you could always design an app around that kind of sure. thing where it's you have an iPhone app. I have an iPhone app. You know, we geolocated by the same position and then it initiates the transaction. But the cool thing about this is that it's, because they've programmed it for every single, well, pretty much every popular ecosystem that's out there, so, um, except Windows Phone. Apple, Android, BlackBerry, and Symbian. Symbian. Yeah. Uh, 2% of the market is Symbian at the moment. Mm. I'm surprised that it's so low. I would have thought there would be much quicker uptake on Symbian because it's just so, mit- so, so many more of them in the market. Yeah, all yeah. those phones are so slow that, that people got tired of waiting for the app to load. No, no, no. Apparently, it works very, very nicely. It does work so. nicely. I've actually tried it on my little Nokia N8 that was at home. I installed it on every device that I could possibly try it on. And the app actually works pretty well on it. I mean, if you look at like a BlackBerry 8520, has a, I think it's a 624 megahertz processor on it. Yeah. And like a Nokia N8, has got an 800 megahertz processor. So it's already one up on it there. Yeah. I mean, it's got more RAM. It's, it's technically a better phone. Yes. Um, and they've obviously programmed it to be decent on Symbian. They didn't just port it across from an iPhone or an Android version. But uh, the app works really well. It's one thing you've got to give FNB credit for. They've made it multi-platform. They've done it really, really well. It's, you know, the same functionality they roll out to everyone. I mean, I got the update for all three ecosystems I was in. I got it on the same day. You know, I was updating iOS, BlackBerry, Symbian, all the apps straight away. Every, you know, every single person had the ability to do geo payments on the same day. And even though it was, you know, leaked out on the Monday, the fact is when they made the official announcement at the event that day, the app was live and everyone could go and use it immediately. Yeah. I, you know, I think it's just, it's, a, it's just, it's great. And I, you know, it, it, uh, it solves a real problem. And I just love the way they're like putting some really cool incremental stuff in the mix here. There's just, every time there's uh, something new and interesting, it just kind of trickles down to the application. I'm kind of surprised at, uh, you know, at the fact that that it went this route and they didn't get all swept up in the whole NFC hype, because that's still like a really really big deal. If they'd gone with NFC, uh, and there would be like I probably know three people that have been able to you know <laughs> that would have been able to use it because they've got NFC enabled phones. Yeah, and it's not like we're using crappy phones. We're using seriously good smartphones. It just happened to not have NFC built in. Yeah, the I point is that NFC is a, do- a dead dog already. Well, it's NFC, just- sorry, in my opinion, is for bloody streaming over bluetooth nfc is an awesome way to switch your bluetooth radio on and off and save killer battery power sorry it's for pairing devices it's really cool you know you've got like a hands-free kit in your car or whatever you walk up like you sit in your car you touch your phone to it and all of a sudden it knows your hands freeze on or it pairs with it automatically you You walk away and it switches off magic exactly like nfc is really cool for things like that it's not a mobile payment solution it's the the amount of rollout that you'd have to do to get that around the country would be just stupid we've only Mm. just gotten chip and pin kind of working yeah Yeah. and the americans still haven't got chip and pin working so yeah exactly so anyway, so there is, uh, there's that in uh, FNB Geo payments. Very well done, gentlemen. I uh, hats off. I'm proud to remain an FNB customer. You've got me for another year. Yeah, <laughs> I think it really is. I mean, where I mean, are you as, going? I mean, uh, as you know, are you still happy with uh, Standard Bank, Ben Kelly? Have I ever been happy with Standard Bank? Ah, oh, you know, <laughs> grumble, grumble, grumble. Uh, no, the point is, 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 it's very simple. Is that FNB. Like Apple took for Apple with the iPhone took for a very long time. They took the leadership position in the smartphone race. I mean, you can start arguing now about the the about Android and Windows Phone and stuff like that, and you can start comparing one with the other and make like for like comparisons. Yes. Uh, uh, but for a long time, the, there was only one player in the game, and that was Apple. You know, in the, in the real the the cool smartphone market. You know, they just owned the market. It was very simple. And FMB, uh, and it was good. It wasn't necessarily a product thing. It was it was just a thought leadership issue, that they were the company that was showing people how things should be done, and that's what FMB are doing at the moment in banking in South Africa. Is they're just showing people how it should be done. 
you know, mm. and I just don't understand why everybody else just doesn't look what F&B is doing Nobody and copy it. Nobody else got an app yet, guys. Yeah, Nobody I else th- got an I app. I think the problem is, is that if you look at F&B's leadership structure, Michael Yodan said, you know, it, it looks like what he's picked a route and he's taken them down it. And he said, this is what we're going to do. And there's no, you know, arguments about it and if this and and that and but this. It's literally, they've, they've picked a route. They understand the way that they have to get from A to B and they're innovating straight down that path. Sure. Whereas the other banks seem to be backwards and forwards and we need this, but we need that. And they're trying to integrate everything all at the same time. And you know what? This, FNB didn't get all of this in a day. You know, they started with their uh, their social media accounts and trying to win people, you know, influencers on social media, and they got them to switch accounts. And then once they had the influencers, they went to the broader market. Then they did advertising. Then they did the app. Then they did the smartphone deal. You know, and they've just packed yeah. everything on. And it just seems like all these other banks are just trying to do everything at once, and you you just can't. You can't well, put can that much what together the cool at once. The part about all of this is FNB is really engineering themselves into a place where they don't have to charge you bank charges anymore. Yeah. How nice would that be? Because I think that is a really screwed up paradigm. It's like, yeah. so, okay, so I put all my money with you, then you loan it out to people, but you charge me for the luxury of putting all my money with you. Huh? Exactly. Come on, guys, that really actually doesn't make sense. And I think banking is like fatally flawed because of that. I think that there are just like, huge huge bank charges in the mix FNB um, my two cents worth on this is that they're like actually streets ahead of the market and what they're in the process to, of doing at the moment is the next big thing the end game is like we are not charging you for being a customer but we have all of this other stuff that we make rad revenues off of all right and we're going to bolt that on or look at it from the other perspective that you don't mind paying that bank charge because you've got access to all of this other cool stuff. I mean, the iPad deal is like fantastic. Yeah. It's a really, really, it's like, I don't need a new iPad right now, but I can tell you something. I'm seriously thinking about it. So anyway, yeah, let's move on to something. that's a ton more fun and completely non tradey and like serious and money, or maybe you can maybe correlate it to uh, lost time and lost money. But finally, eventually, after, after so so much time, Diablo three is here, people. I think that's secretly why we don't have nearly as many people as what we <laughs> normally have in the chat room this time of night. I think guys are queuing up at the midnight launches yeah, now. Queuing yeah, up for sure. outside VT Games and yeah, <laughs> there's there's Cape Town ones, there's Joburg ones, there's multiple stores. Everyone, yeah. there's guys selling it actually at 11 p.m. tonight. They're breaking a curfew an hour early so that you can get home and download it before the servers even start. So mm. let me say this: I'm really amped for Diablo three, but. I think it's going to be a fail. And I'll tell okay. you why. Okay, it, so it I've been playing the demo. Expectation. I've been playing the demo. Demo's great. It's phenomenal. Really nice. It's like a fantastic game. The artwork's like absolutely awesome. I think uh, the really, you know, the difficulty levels, they've, they've done some good work there. It's like you feel like you're getting your ass handed to you, but you know you could improve and you could seriously crack those higher levels of difficulty, right? And that's all awesome and it's cool and the storyline's awesome and you can run around and kill stuff and there's blood and there's ghoulies and there's that crazy so skeleton it's stuff. It's Blizzard. It's awesome. But I'm really worried about the single user lag issue that people have been talking about and kind of predicting. And I think that that is pretty scary because you know what the whole basic like whole thing behind the single user lag is right you're not playing an mmorpg but you're yeah all right so while you're only playing on your ace on your computer all right it's constantly doing all of the server polling stuff and you still have to be connected to a server okay. all right and uh lovely little south africa here our end of the world um we don't have the best bandwidths and so that's the one problem. And the other problem is um, it hasn't been quite as evident in the demo, but it's kind of been there in the demo. Now you scale that out to how many players worldwide? Well, you saw what happened when they opened it for the beta weekend when they made it a public beta. Yeah. You, no one could sign in. Yes. It I, went down. They I, had to do, they reworked the servers. They switched on a whole bank of servers again, a new bank. They, you know, um, like amped it up and it still crashed. They just, well, they could not handle the amount I mean, of I people. Think I think the issue is that they didn't expect the amount of people signing up for the beta. Like, saying, and they obviously, I mean, th- these people are, I mean, Blizzard would be commissioning their servers based on, a, on an expected load. Yeah. Okay. They know how many they're going to sell. In fact, they know how many they have sold yeah. uh, for launch day. 
Yeah. Okay. What they didn't, and they probably hadn't turned on those servers for the for that weekend. They they said, well, okay, we'll turn on X percent of the server, yeah. the authentication servers for this weekend because that's how many people we think we're going to get. And then suddenly they got smacked to hell and gone. Well, they and even I would just, they know how big this game is going to be. Yeah. So. They even released a document, like a little blog post, telling you to go and get uh, your Google, you like sign into your Blizzard.net account, and you get mm. your little authenticator key and your little username, and get everything ready now. And if you've pre-purchased the game for download, you download the client first, so that everything's waiting for you. Because they know that they're going to just get hit with massive demands on yeah. their servers on launch day, and you know we might not see it if you like myself and Ben if you ordered it from a regular you know online retailer who's going to deliver it to us tomorrow yeah. at least we're missing out on that first you know like 8 to 10 hour rush on the servers where it's going to be absolute madness where everyone's trying to sign in sure. but I, honestly this first week's going to be chaos yeah I, you know, I tend to maybe I'm getting old but I just wait till the madness has <laughs> died down you know, and for like, anything you know, but this I don't know. Anything but this I would have waited. This is 12 years of waiting. You know how busy I am with certain things at the moment, (laughs) so I can afford to wait. But the thing is, it's like I'm also starting to get an appreciation for scale with some of the stuff we're working through at the moment. I mean, we ran some numbers the other day, okay? So so just serving up a little bit of data, all right, but to a lot of users, all right? So we ran some numbers on like 3 million users. Granted, it's like way, way, way out there, but we ran some numbers on hosting at Amazon, uh, 3 million users, maybe 2 gigs of data in total, but serving a lot of that kind of stuff out, all right? Trying a 7,500 US dollar a month bandwidth bill. Yep. Well, EC2 charges you for amount of time spent on the server, not bandwidth. Yeah, well, they also charge bandwidth in, bandwidth bandwidth out. It's like, it's... It's pretty insane. So you now imagine, all right, how many players worldwide, every single one of them <laughs> downloading a client or a patch that's going to be easily half a gig big, yep. if not a little bit bigger, all right, okay. Suddenly, you t- and, and now you've got to put that on premium, premium CDN type bandwidth because guess what? People are not going to put up with like 15K a second downloads. Guess well, what? It'll be another 12 years before no, you patch, that's, right? So that's where Blizzard actually wins because built into their downloader yes. is that P2P. But they, you know. they don't have an option but to do that. Exactly. Right? Well, they have to. But look, and here's the you, thing. They should And then know. you're a dude like me, all right, that has an ISP that throttles peer-to-peer, all right? As most of us do. Okay. So, so you end up like pulling most of it down over HTTP anyway. Yeah, yeah. but in the, the biggest markets, they're, they're not throttling it peer-to-peer. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, no, for sure. But I mean, you know what? It's it gets pretty scary. But it, they've got it, they've got World of Warcraft. Scary. They had StarCraft two, which was a similarly large launch for them. But not nearly as entrenched in the like need to be signed in stuff. And that's that that's where I no, think this touch and to go. Sign into your had, battle net. You still had to be in with bat- your battle.net account and online for the entire I don't think it was as strict as this, as far as I've yeah, heard. This like, checks like regularly. This pulls down portions of apparently it pulls down portions of the game file to unlock your inventory when you sign oh, in so your no, inventory file crazy. isn't even kept on your hard drive no man. it's uh-uh. it's apparent it's, anyway. look it's mad but it's we the best game it. i'm going to ever play and i'm saying that now <laughs> no look i really hope it succeeds but i think i i think some hiccups are predicted oh uh, many hiccups mm. while we're speaking about bandwidth stuff there's a couple of interesting bandwidth topics we should probably get into that ben suggested one of them being uh, the fact that wax is live it's alive <laughs> the west african cable system Yep. He's here. Yep. And, and the crowds roared, and then they didn't. Cause we'll wait for a little bit, and then we'll decide what's... My understanding is it's not quite as big a deal as a lot of people are making it out yeah. to be, because it is very... It's actually quite a closed cable system. There's a limited number of parties that have got access to it. It's not going to be quite as... Well, it's not an open access cable by any means. It's stretch, not right? CCOM. Yeah. I mean, CCOM revolutionized our market because it was the first time that there was really private investment rocking up with bandwidth, lighting it up for anyone to really buy it. And we sure. saw this massive drop in broadband prices. Now we've got, I think it's two or three more cables since then. Yes. And there's another like four to hit in the next two or three years. So Big distinction, of course, being that those aren't architected from an ownership and an availability yeah. perspective. Uh, so look, the I mean, C-com, so. more more undersea cables are never a bad thing. I mean, sure. people being able to buy redundant bandwidth, and you know, when CCOM goes down, the nation crawls on an internet mm. yeah, sort of. Yeah, So if they can buy it, you know, if they can buy redundancy on other cables, I mean, I know that uh, MWeb specifically takes out on 
um, they were taking out on Sat three. They yeah, had redundancy right. there, whereas other hosts weren't. Well, other yeah, ISPs it, weren't. Cheaper guys tend to be Seacom only, which C-com is why only, you see exactly. like them completely shred and like grind to a halt. Well, what I'm really hoping for is for the handful of guys that are involved with WAX, it gives them the ability to really drive prices down yeah. and that there's a reactionary move on the other side of the equation. One would hope so, yeah. yeah. Look, I mean, that's, that's all I'm looking for is reliability and then yeah. cheaper prices comes down. Pay next. me to use your internet. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If so, only. Yeah. Please deliver me a one times 10 megabit ADSL line to my house and an uncapped Unthrottled, unshaped, unshaped, low contention connection to that. Oh, These and, and, and a lot a of commas and ends in there, boys. Yeah. A lot of commas and ends. And, 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 and a thousand bands into my bank account each month, please. Yeah. Indeed. No, um, if only. Now the interesting one was yeah. yeah, yeah, sell C price cuts. There we go. So it's down to forty nine rand. Sixty nine rand. Sixty. That's sixty nine foot. That's with a modem, though, isn't it? Uh, no, I don't think. so has been squirrels around and looks. I know that the one that kind of <laughs> yeah, really like jumped out at me was the uh, twelve ninety nine for that two gig a month one now for two years yeah. as opposed okay, so to two thousand. So here you go. All right, five hundred meg sim only used to cost you one hundred and nine ronters per month on contract twenty four month contract. Now cost you forty nine ronters per month, which works mm-hmm. out to thirty nine cents a meg. Which is uh, nice. five hundred meg and a seven point two megabit per second speed stick. Used to cost you one twenty nine per month, now sixty nine per month. Yeah. Two gigs sim only was two seventy nine per month. Now ninety nine ronters per month. And I want to know if you can bolt that onto your contract. It's like twelve or thirteen you US. That's this. awesome, right? No, that's, that's a really good price. If you can bolt that onto your phone then you can have an iPhone or an Android. My understanding is that it's distinct and that's it's, distinct, you know, it's yeah. like kind of it's separate, it's right? It's data but because if you could bolt that onto your contract and use it, you know, just use the setting up mobile hotspot feature on your phone essentially. Yeah. yeah. Then you've got all the data you'd need A for your phone and B to have some mobile browsing so that if you're out and about with your laptop and all of a sudden you need connection, just pop open a mobile hotspot, connect quickly, yeah. do a bit of work. It's the problem that these guys are that all these cell phone providers have don't seem to understand is that they could make extra money out of people by allowing them to do that. I mean, it's like I have a Vodacom contract, okay? Now I'd be very happy to take their one forty nine a month option which is the two plus one yeah mm. uh, it was a two plus two it's two plus yeah. two yeah okay and slap that sim card into my ipad and use it as my ipad thing but i can't i'd have to take out a separate contract to yeah. do it and i don't want to take out another contract i've got enough bloody contracts as it is already no, yeah you see and i think you know uh, the major hassle right now is there's n- not enough twin sims in the market yeah. i really want the ability to say okay i have no problem buying like a tidy chunk of bandwidth off of you a month yeah. but give me four sims please so I can use exactly. single data balance in four yeah. devices and I'll be really really yeah. happy give me, so, a, give one, me a 10 one gig voice bundle card, yeah. one voice card and three, three data gig. cards yeah. sure. and all my SMS's go to my voice card and, every, and, the day, and my pool of 10 gig is shared across yeah. all my devices for that month you heard it here first people that's Do what it. I want. Come on, Make cellular it operators. This is what we want. But Make us thing, happy. The thing is that that two gig SIM only one for 99 bucks a month is perfect for iPad users. Yeah. Cell Look, C- two gigs a bit. I'll be honest with you. Two gigs a two bit gigs up there, big. eh? That's a lot for an iPad, dude. I can That's get, a I can, lot of... You can. Yes, no, 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 you could. Yes, but I could use 24 gigs a month if I want, Ben. It's <laughs> like, but the, you know, I'll play the same YouTube high-def video over and over and over again. You can totally do it, but what I'm saying is average usage. I mean, so on my iPhone at the moment, mm-hmm. I'm chewing through 500 meg a month. Yeah. I'm not going over my... I have rollover every single month. I have a you daughter who really it. likes to watch YouTube videos. That's what <laughs> DSL's for, dude. Because you know what? If you're paying 3G prices for that, you're overpaying. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean... But, I mean, 2 gig is... I mean, I reckon you could... I mean, for I, mobile I, usage? I ration myself on my cell phone and I go through 500 meg. Wow, month. okay. All right. Okay. I'm always in Wi-Fi. It's yeah. See, okay. this is the other thing. That's it's like a, work, yeah, my work, work, I've got home, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Home. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say that uh, if Again, you don't have any other form of connectivity, yes. totally. Then yeah. you know that then it makes two sense. Gigs, great. But I think you would want to still have two gigs across mm. one or two devices, okay. or maybe have it in a Wi-Fi so you yeah. can like combine your usage across okay. three devices. So, you know? I just think that for somebody like my mother, for example, who is a complete technophobe. Throw that into an iPad with a two gig, uh, two gig, give her two gigs a month for ninety nine bucks, and 
on Celsi, which is a really ni- rock solid network. Yes. With nice coverage and good speeds. And suddenly we're talking like, for some, for like, that's her only computing device. Yeah. You know, that's actually a really yeah. nice, yeah. there's more than enough bandwidth for her to do whatever she wants. She's never going to run yeah. out. See, that, that could never work for me, like, or any of us really. I mean, I've got three PCs, my media yeah. server, yes. Xbox, PlayStation, two tablets, three phones. Like, that's all <laughs> running off my Wi Fi at home. Two gigs would, you know, I'd be updating apps and it would be gone. So, sure. like it's, um, home usage for for the average, you know, for a regular person, cool. For like a high usage, any high usage family or no. high usage individual, two gigs is, it's not enough. And on, just having it on one device is actually a bit of a, like, it's a bit prohibitive because then you're, you know, if you put it into your tablet, then instead of, you know, if you want to use your laptop and you need to put out, you know, if you want to actually type something out or use an office application or something while browsing or you know you can't do it so if having you've got an iP- ipad the latest uh, ipad you can just turn it into a wi-fi hotspot. no you can't you can't in south no, you africa can't. can't you it's, okay it's Not actually dithering. locked it's locked Not down dithering. to certain plans in the United States even. Yep. It's not even like AT and T is the only one who do it. It's like okay. literally if you're on this that plan sucks. on AT and T you can unlock it. I'm jailbreaking my iPad. I yep. got really annoyed this week because I put a really big ATA uh um sim sim into it. Well not a, it was no. a it was a micro sim but one of the really, really big balance into my into my iPad and I've been astounded by some of the speeds I'm getting. I mean eight is shaping beautifully. Oh, it's like hey, eight, nine megabits no hassle. Yep. I was sitting last week Friday getting like a shoulder and a neck massage at the spa and rocking eight megabits worth of eight off my lap. I was like uh, and I'm reading news stories. I should really be watching videos right yeah. now. But anyway. But um really irritating to me that that I can't tether that thing. And I'm like, but why? That is such a that's that's a crock, dude. I Seriously. could put it into my fire. South African networks don't give a crap. About you see, but the thing is, now that I have a 3G-capable iPad, I do not want to go back to having an iPad. Uh, yeah, 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 my um, fine. My fine. No, yeah. It's it's a fantastic, elegant little step around and work around, mm. like a little side step. But it's just so convenient knowing that when I pick this thing up, regardless of the state, I have the interwebs. It is yeah. a screen that is connected to the interwebs, whether it is over a Wi-Fi network. It's just too much of a hassle reaching around in your bag, hoping you haven't used the battery up, remembering to charge it at night. It's just another thing to do. It, yeah. it makes great sense having it as a, as a mm-hmm. standalone device. But no tethering, so I'm jailbreaking. At least there you, you go. Yeah. <laughs> Suck on that. Yeah. At least you called it cook. 3G, though, <laughs> because you can't call it 4G anymore now. Not even Apple can. <laughs> yes. But dude, let me tell you, much better speeds on ATA with well, the new iPad. the new iPad's the, yeah. got the 21.6 megasec or 14.4. Yeah, but the old one, it's double, no, but the, old double one, the speed of the old yes, one. Yes, but the old one I wasn't getting anything close to the limit on. So but that's you, the interesting that's thing. The it should thing, theoretically, it, let's say the previous in one, theory, had, and I think it was a meg, it's seven, 14 before, yeah. and now it's a 21. 21 All right, yeah. okay. I never got anything close to 8 on my previous iPad. No ways. Not even close. Now I'm getting 8. Happy. So I don't know. There's some dark, you, well, look, what is they, this dark magic? They're using they're definitely using new uh, new Wi-Fi radios in there because yeah. they switched manufacturers. I think Qualcomm's doing it now. Yes. So they've switched there. Maybe that's the big difference. I yeah. mean, who knows? It's Apple. No, like black <laughs> magic. And <laughs> While we're touching and stuff. on iPads, quickly, <laughs> uh, it uh, it may very soon not be called it's 4G in South yeah. Africa. There's been a little bit of... Uh, fracas. Been, yes, indeed. A fracas. I love that. Fracas. 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 For car. For car. Yes, indeed. A brouhaha <laughs> around uh, um, Apple calling it 4G. Yeah, specifically those island dwellers in Australia. Or like, hey, here in South Africa where yeah. we don't have the... Uh, well, we do have the LTE, but we don't have it on the frequency. Yeah. So, hey. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> because so of our friends at Ecasa. Being uh, replaced with... What, what are they calling it? It's the now the iPad, Wi-Fi, and cellular... They've already changed some oh, of the websites. So it's, lame. Yeah, you can just feel Steve rolling around in the grave. Yes, going, he was just no! like reached out of his pocket and like <laughs> shot a lightning bolt in some like <laughs> dictator's face, yeah. and the There's problem an would go that, away. So. Or send yeah. him an iPad, and he'd be gone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, but uh, we love the iPad. It's awesome. But anyway, uh, yeah. you know, so now it's the Wi-Fi and cellular Wi-Fi and vomit. Cellular. Sounds crap. Hmm. Uh, let's quickly keep things on. Uh, on networking related stuff Ben you said that the first 802.11 AC routers began shipping this week yes. what pray tell is a 802.11 AC okay, router so can you plug it straight yeah. into your wall powered by Eskom <laughs> <laughs> no no I so know what A is but what's the C bit? okay no AC is 
it's completely different to completely a. new. Yeah, a is A is old, boring, dead. Stupid. Okay. Uh, uh, but uh, the the next so we've got N at the moment, which yes. is quite cool for streaming video across your house. Uh, to a certain level. And copying files across yeah. your network. Can I so, tell you something interesting? My guy said in the office t today, please, can you go out and buy us a gigabit switch? I was like, huh? Why don't you just jack straight into the network? Oh, no, because the 10100 one we have there is slower than using 802.11n. <laughs> please get us a faster switch or we'll just carry on using Wi-Fi. Interesting. Yeah. Right? So, anyway. so, so AC can sh uh, go up to speeds of 1.3 gigabits a second. Oh, I love uh, that. So, yep. so for offices where you because that is shared. Trade-off, of course, is that you have a, a mysterious growth growing out of yes. like the, the, the left-hand uh, side uh, of your I face. Don't, I don't know okay. what. <laughs> <laughs> for 1.3 gigabits a second of wireless yeah. transmission, I'm fine yeah. with whatever the hell. You can replace your arm with face. the growth. It would be okay <laughs> as long as it gives me better signal retention. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So besides the 1.3 gigabits with throughput, what are the other benefits? Okay, I'm just going to go back to where I was. <laughs> More range obviously yeah i think so and uh i mean uh, at least okay so at least one gigabit per second uh maximum single link throughput of 500 megabits per second uh so you even if you've got two two or three people on the net network you should still be getting uh maximum speed okay uh um and then uh they've up the channel bandwidths to so it's now 80 megahertz and 160 megahertz instead of 40 megahertz which is the maximum in n uh it supports up to eight different streams of uh mimo which is mul multiple input multiple multiple input. Input. Like yeah. multiple multiple plenty yeah. aerials yeah, pretty plenty much plenty aerials <laughs> 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 so so yeah, so and uh, I mean, there's not really. I mean, there's no real yeah. re real world reviews. You don't trust what the vendors say. But Buffalo, which is they don't really sell here. I don't think you can get Buffalo routers here. Uh, there's probably someone. There's probably it some in guy in his garage importing them. Look, uh, until it's locked <laughs> down by someone like Cisco and Netgear and the main. Yeah. Routers so Netgear have uh, Netgear have announced. So, uh, is, is this a fully ratified yeah, standard? No, yeah. Completely yeah. ratified. Yeah. AC is the next way. So. Oh, how yeah. the times have changed. ABG pre -N, and AC. Okay. Yeah. Anybody remember pre-N? Yeah. Now ABG there's a fully N. ratified standard. So uh, <laughs> Netgear have announced the first ones, but they haven't shipped yet. Yeah, uh, and Buffalo have announced that they're shipping their first ones. So yeah. they kind of make first to market, uh, and yeah, we'll wait to see who the while the the laptop vendors, because there are. Uh, I'm just looking here. There are uh, smartphone processors for it. Yeah, I'm sure Qualcomm's gonna like. Uh, well, I think build that little Oki in there. Yeah, but uh, there's a, but there is actually a low power power 802.11 ac processor available today which people could put into a smartphone nice uh why yeah. you would want 500 megabits to your smartphone well, don't ask don't ask it's faster we need it no, well, <laughs> this is the thing is that they were showing off concept a couple of months ago of wi-fi switching so you're on a skype call between uh, wi-fi networks yes and you never drop as long as you're connect as long as you have passwords and access credentials for all the networks that you're walking along obviously with your phone you will literally the call the data will just be passed off to the next network without actual any loss of signal so that's cool they actually showed proof of concept where a guy was on a skype call went from one network one wi-fi network completely to a different wi-fi network and didn't drop the call and things like 802.11 ac will actually allow you to do that kind of stuff because it's uh you know it's not just about the bandwidth there's obviously exactly. like this st there's stuff more, under the there's hood there's more yeah. channels there's yeah. better bandwidth control mm. there's you know probably all better that, handover all of that exactly kind of stuff, all yeah. that kind of stuff is going to come into it so what you're looking at is a city like new york where there's just wi-fi every, open wi-fi everywhere you're literally going to be able to walk around with your cell phone and just be on a skype, skype call not using data at all Ooh. well not using any data that you're paying for Net neutrality guys are going to love oh they're going to love it <laughs> yeah, it's awesome so much <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, but okay. So let's move on from that. There's a couple of other topics, but I mean, I don't really care about Facebook's IPO and the fact that Mark Zuckerberg wore a hoodie last week and someone thought ah! that was like rude. So rude. Um, there's a couple of uh, interesting <laughs> rumors out there. Let's move on to uh, Picks of the Week because it's my favorite part of the show. And um, we're going to start with Ben Kelly because he normally talks a lot about his pick of the week and i need to quickly go and nail down exactly what my <laughs> pick of the week is so ben 
Okay. Tell me what your pick of the so, week is, please, sir. So, uh, there's been a little bit of a buzz around some people like making a rant about WhatsApp and how much they hate WhatsApp uh, because it's uh, firstly they charge you for it, so you have to pay one dollar for it. Uh, this is the iPhone version. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you and it doesn't record your, it doesn't log your your chats. Uh, and so what's it called? WhatsApp. You know no, WhatsApp. Okay, no, no yeah. I, thought, I yeah. thought you were talking about a different version no, 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 of WhatsApp. Just, oh, okay. No, 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 the same general, you know WhatsApp, you, yes. you, you use it all WhatsApp. the time. Yeah, jeez. Okay. I WhatsApped be- Dave Greenway earlier it's today, kind of you WhatsApped me back, it, it was kind of amazing. become the de yeah. facto uh, standard for intermediate... Inter-ecosystem inter- inter- ecosystem communication. communications. Yeah, and does. some people are saying, well, why BBM the hell... for everybody else. <laughs> why, are you, yeah, why are you using WhatsApp? Because it's like... It would have been fine three years ago, but really, there's like there's so much functionality missing from this from this application that it really doesn't make sense to use it. And people are saying that rather you should be using is Google Talk okay. because it logs onto Google Talk, it logs all your conversations, uh, and you and it it supports. Uh, and I can switch from one device to another device yeah. and have all of that tra- tra- yeah. chat chat transcript reflect across kind of the way yeah. it does with our message okay yes. okay so that's the kind of the kind of argument which is being made so in the spirit of being an early adopter i went and found a, a web an application on the st- on the a- app store which is called imo like emo but with an uh, yes, i like emo but <laughs> with an i okay which is okay. it's just a, a generic instant messaging application it's completely free it's available for android for blackberry and for iOS, which is the kind of the, it had to be. The trifecta. Yeah, it, has to, it had to have that. Mm. Well, the South African uh, trifecta. The unholy trinity. And, yes. <laughs> and uh, I had a long uh, I am discussion which with I'm a friend. I'm so of, glad you said I am discussion. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> with, a anyway. friend of, with a friend of mine okay. over the weekend on my, on my iPad. Yes. Uh, and when I got to work this morning, I looked in my um, my Gmail history and the whole transcript was right there and available. Okay, so, so uh, it's a generic IM application for Google. Talk. Yeah, you can use it for ICQ and AOL okay. and MSN and but but people, I mean, I think the multi-protocol the, the, yeah, client. Yeah, it's a multi-protocol client. But mm-hmm. I mean, the fact is that Google, the G, Google Talk for Gmail users, Google Talk is really the the, the, the standard. Yeah, for uh, sure. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. Anybody. See, I find that ridiculously irritating because the problem is when I'm looking at my Gmail, people are like, ping, ping, ping. And I'm yeah. like, no, you belong in an application <laughs> where I can chat to you through an application. But off. this weird web stuff going on in Gmail, not loving yeah. it. So, and what I found is the, the bad part is that the when I was looking at my iPhone, so I signed in on both dev- devices, the incoming chats were reflecting on my iPhone. My outgoing messages weren't. That's interesting. Okay, so quite, kind of weird. Skype's got a funny bug like that too. Skype mm-hmm. does that kind of stuff. So every now and then, if I've had a Skype discussion on my on my Skype desktop mm-hmm. clients, and I and I open up my iPhone, right, uh, it'll show like five new five new messages, and I check like who, and they're all from me to someone else. So, so uh, yeah, I'm I mean also there, a bit of a there a are bug. people using saying you should be using Viber. Uh, as as an yeah, option, yeah, I'm not a fan. Okay. I'll be honest. But it's installed, but, but it's. But mm. yeah. my argument is this: is that if you're using Google Talk as your bait, core messaging application, yeah, okay, that's a thing which you have already. It's not a new ecosystem yeah, okay. which you have to build up. Already, you've got, con- you con- you got peop- contacts there. Yeah, you already okay. got contacts there, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I um, think the big one um, is still going to be Facebook in that because yeah. Facebook chats. Pretty much every smartphone. IMO also supports Facebook chat yeah, as well. So but if you look at Facebook, there. If you looked at what Zuckerberg said, I know he, you know, had his little meeting about their IPO. He literally He's wearing stated, a hoodie. I don't want to hear about. It. <laughs> they're they're pushing into mobile, but that's yeah, that's their. Way, inter- yeah. They're putting all of their resources behind it now, yeah. and I think that's where they're going to come in. They're going to try and take over the IM. They want everyone's traffic flowing through them anyway. They totally. want to be the core yeah. messaging. If your all your messages are going through them, then you're going to 
be tempted to browse other things on there, mm. yeah. including advertising, including the feed. I hate Facebook so much, though. And everyone yeah, feel, hates it. I and feel yet, dirty you know, whenever it's I use it. Like, like you feel can't like use anything else for some things. Mm. Yeah, it's true. Like stalking people, you have to use Facebook. <laughs> it's just you can't stalk people Googling on Twitter. Googling is like so last century. Exactly. <laughs> and if you Google them, you'll just find their Facebook profile anyway. So, yes, you know, indeed. just stalk yeah. people on Facebook and get it over with. Okay. I just also want to give quickly a quick update to a previous pick I did. Yes. Uh, a few You can't talk time. about the uh yes, the vinyl transcribing. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is the <laughs> Ion LP. <laughs> no. Uh a few appearances ago I spoke about Geek and Sundry, which yes. is a YouTube oh. channel run by Felicia Day and and them. And but specifically there is one show called Tabletop, oh, which I is done Tabletop. by Will Wheaton where he plays board games with wow. his friends. And it is the most fantastic show. So about half an hour long and it is phenomenal. You thought never thought that watching people play board games could be interesting, I but will it is plus one that pick. And it is fantastic. And even cooler almost as cool as the actual show itself is the table that they play on, which is made by a company called Geek Chic, which is an American company. And I went onto their website. I'm this is not really a pick because it's because they're in, they're in the states, and but they custom make gaming tables. Oh wow! So like, if you imagine like poker tables, like uh, sort of with with the green felt. In this case, it's a red felt. Uh, but and the the table, the Greenway's actual game Googling. surface is sunken. So just, Googling. just sunken slightly below the level of the table, and then it's a it's actually a dining room table. So you can put the the the, the sleeves in to cover up the thing when you're using it as a normal dining room table, or just play games on it forever. Yes, and, and it, it is take it out is beautiful. I mean, and some of their stuff goes up to like ten, twelve thousand dollars, but no. it's every single piece is custom, is is made, handmade, and they ship it to you when it's ready. You know, so you put your order in, and they will let you know when you can have it, okay. and it is just beautiful. But if 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 you do nothing else with your time on YouTube, go to Geek and Sundry, and watch, watch Tabletop. tabletop. Okay. It is fantastic. All right, good. I am stuck on this website now. Dave Greenway, what is your <laughs> pick of the week? Stop, stop surfing. Okay, and I'm, give okay, I'm going to stop o- o- ogling at the tables and stuff. Okay, so first pick of the week. Uh, I'm going to go through them quickly. There's three picks and a pick on. So, <laughs> Jeez. Okay, so I'm clearly uh, not picking anything tonight. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> first pick is, I don't know if anyone ever saw the Smoked by Windows Phone campaign in the States. Yes, yes. Basically what they did, they took uh, regular mundane tasks that they'd obviously figured out that Windows Phone was really good at, and they got other smartphone users to bring theirs, and they challenged them. And if you won, you got like prizes and stuff. Yeah. And if you lost, you didn't. So anyway, uh, Nokia South Africa did the same thing in Gateway Shopping Center. If you search on YouTube, I think the video is Lost to Lumia. Um, I'll send a link across to Brett so you can put it in the show notes. Okay. But basically exactly the same thing, and you watch a guy smoking South Africans with their cell phones. Second thing I want to pick, also a YouTube video. It's a real transformer. It's only like, you know, 20 centimeters big, but it's a car, and it changes into a robot, and it's got little... <laughs> it, it, it moves, and it like does high fives and fist pumps into the air and so stuff, and it, it transforms called? back into... It's made by a guy named Kenji Ishida and JS Robotics, and it's literally called Brave Robot Number no. Eight. Can't fault the Japanese Brave people for Robot their like no. naming conventions. Anyway, awesome. third pick. Um, I'm pretty sure you've picked it. It's the Nike Fuel Band. I got mine a couple of days ago. I managed to wangle someone in the United States, well, who went there Indeed. to bring one back for me. And hence is born my pick on because the app for iPhone. The Facebook connection so that you can beat up on your friends and tell them, ha ha, you suck at being fit because I'm fitter than you and made more magical Nike fuel points than you isn't working. And I really, really want to beat people. I'm ultra competitive at this stuff. Tell me about it, dude. I'm I'm really annoyed at the fact that they have two fantastic products in my opinion. They've got the fuel band and that whole ecosystem and everything else. And they have the Nike Plus running application. Both of them live very nicely on an iPhone. Both of them live very nicely in the cloud. They do not live together. I'm like, it's useless. guys, really, it's it's time now. Let's integrate the stuff together because I'm earning fuel in two separate applications that are both your applications. Yeah. And I'm really sick of seeing this little message to say, ooh, but we're working on integrating these two together. Boo, bad, shame on you. You should have thought about this before you launched the fuel band and developed another application. Exactly. But Go bearing, to your room, Nike. Bearing that in mind, the fun thing is I spoke to one of the Nike salespeople over the weekend and he said they something. They don't have a fuel band. He doesn't, but apparently something about January next year going international. Oh, cool. 
Yeah. Right. So lots of awesome your Facebook list. friends to beat down on as long as the application is updated and, and then starts will, working again. Then I will face exactly the same problem I do very, very shortly with iTunes in that I'm completely invested in a US ecosystem oh, and now I so can't US. bring this into my country. Anyway. Yep. Okay, so my pick of the week is uh, very lo-fi. It is something that Ben will be very, very familiar with. Um, but Same to do with caves. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yes, but it's probably something you could use in a cave. Um, so giving a little bit of background context, we're busy working on some online stuff at the moment and working with the CMS. And that CMS does not like the formatting produced by Word. Okay, Word, you think it's a plain text document. You think there's no formatting in it. You paste it into a CMS and it's just ugly. And there's formatting and markup and other ugly stuff that ends up in there. So you resort to a little text editor. Or if you're using a Mac, you use it's, it's text edit, yeah, isn't it? Text, text edit, edit yeah. app, yeah? yeah. Bundled with every single Mac, it's great. Right? The reason this works really, really well for journalists is one reason, okay, mainly is the fact that Mac has system-wide spell checking capability. So if you've set the correct region to your Mac, you don't need a spell checker. Where it falls down massively, Ben knows exactly where I'm going with this, where it falls down massively is the other thing that journalists use every single day is... Word count. Word count, <laughs> exactly. Because if you're a freelance journalist, you've got to know how much you bill. And if you're not a freelance journalist, you don't want your editor to beat you for overwriting or underwriting, right? So what you do is you write to the right length and we all use a word count. Now, there's a fantastic free little application called NanoCount that's been around for absolute years. I used it last probably about, what, four or five years ago. And all it is is a very simple application that sits and snoops how many words are inside text edit and counts them. So you install it, uh, you tile it up, you kind of drag it up next to your text edit window, and every time you click on it, it just updates what the word count is in the active document. And that is how you replace Microsoft Word in one shot on a Mac. Because if you're a journalist, all you need is plain text, spell check, the ability to bold, italicize, and have normal body copy, because you put tags straight into your copy when you write it, and a word count. So my pick of the week is nano count. Been around since the year dot. Yeah, it was actually created for National Novel Writing Month, uh, and because the person needed a word count for text edits. And if you hold on one second, I will tell you who makes it. Nano count. Nano count. Where are While you? you're looking, interesting little Nano. factling for Mac people. I do love this. Any anything that was programmed in Cocoa, so the sort of general. Yes. Programming language. Uh, if you hold the command control D um, yeah. on any word while your mouse is over it, command control D, it yes. should bring up a little dictionary definition pop up. Oh, red. Yeah. Very useful. Okay. So, so NanoCount is my uh, copyright 2005 and 2008. Paul Gorman. Paul Gorman, you are a legend. High well five. done. Mm. There is another Love little you. application just to. Well, at least the journo is oh, using oh, Max. I'll throw in a third one. Is there's a little application called Bean. Which oh, is Bean a, is fantastic. Which is a little free word processor for for OS 10, which is if you want to step up from from word from text edit, then Bean is like the next the next step up the 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 minimalist calendar. But it's it's like so important. People people don't realize how much like random formatting and guff word processes yeah. actually put into like a plain what should seemingly be a plain text yeah. document you know yeah. so nope. um, yeah we're kind of in the mode of type things up in text edit right use nano count for word count and then before you copy and paste it into the CMS you go and turn it into plain text so yeah nano count fantastic and bean also good mm. good pick Ben Okay, gentlemen, shall we call it? It. Oh, well, you know. Should we, <laughs> should we call it a night? Yeah, Pack it in. We've done Make our, a duck. It's, done uh, our hours We've juicy. run over by only about, from four minutes. my estimation, four minutes, which is not bad going, considering the three people in the room tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and we all got to speak. Indeed, indeed. Fantastic. Jeez. It always happens when I host, incidentally, as I speak true. much less than <laughs> what I normally do. <laughs> But thank you for joining me, Mr. Ben Kelly from Ungeeked and Mail and Guardian. Thank you very much, Brett. And Mr. Dave Greenway from uh, Tech Duel and uh, some other stuff. He's Dave Greenway on Twitter. Okay. 
Not safe for work, probably. You don't want to follow this man <laughs> if you have a Twitter account at work. No, I'm just kidding. He's a I try. Unique really sense do. of humor, Mr. Greenway. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very, uh, very nice of you to uh, say. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> very diplomatic. Interesting. It's the same as like, <laughs> may you live in interesting times. May you following the may you follow the in- interesting Dave Greenway on Twitter. <laughs> And that's it for me, Brett Haggard. Thanks for uh, tuning in and listening if you, are, uh, if you are live out there. Otherwise, uh, thanks for downloading the podcast from the iTunes store and a couple other places. We do this every week on, uh, on a Monday night. So, uh, so tune in and uh, come join us in the, tech, uh, in the uh, chat room. Um, there's a fantastic back channel going on in there. You're not getting the full ZA Tech Show experience if you're not in the chat room. So uh, I do encourage you to do that. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Episode 209 done for Monday, the 14th of May, 2012. Take care.